no, this is optional part, but it makes the site more beautiful, which is the content creation. Okay, the the what the public universities want in Malaysia is basically all of us to create original content, because the thing is when we are using this site, we are using content from other sources. Mm -hmm. Now our uh, webometric or the UMS webometric is basically based on our content. So the content which we create is not only the, uh, the publications and manuscripts, it's also other content. For example, blogs as well as YouTube video. Okay? So the first content, which the simplest one you can actually create is the YouTube video. Okay? So I will show you how to create the content using a screen casting software. Okay, we start with the software. So if you, all, if you all need a break anytime, you please go and come. I will, I will stop for you if you need. Okay? Okay. Now, okay. If you look at this website, right? If you look at the, uh, open a uh, Chrome window, so Chrome window, just open one Chrome window. Kosong, just Chrome window. Okay, if you look at this Chrome window, right? This is my logon window. Can you see a small icon there, the orange dot, click, okay? Okay, this is actually a plugin from Google Chrome. It is called Screencastify, okay? Screencastify allows you to broadcast whatever is on your screen, okay, to outside source. Okay, in the earlier days, so you can see the microphone is basically picking up my voice and if you turn on the camera, you can actually turn, you can select the, it will embed the webcam, okay? So allow the webcam to see the picture. So screen castify allows you to broadcast your screen. So this is very good for lecturers as well as if you are teaching programming or bioinformatics, you want to project your screen, this is a very good software. But this is not, uh, the thing is we don't have access to the d information once you record it here. It's, it's stored in a Google Drive and then you can upload it to YouTube or you can do other stuff, but it's a personal, so it's very good for personal use. Okay, but what we have in UMS is the official licensed version which is a screen recorder. Okay, so screen recorder is a screen, it's called screen, uh, screencast o -matic. There are many recorders, but this is the one which we have paid. So we have license for this for three years. Now, when you create, okay, I'll tell you the basic of this. When you create any content in Screencast-O-Matic, it will always ser saved on a server. So if you have officially logged on to the officially uh, assigned license, you have a license key, right? So the, the lecturer will have, to, will have to share the license key. So Dr. Bakhtiar will have a license key and then you will have to record. So once you have your recorder, it will save it in one database, okay? So, uh, and then you will have your own folder assigned to you. And then anytime you can access that folder and do manipulate or download or delete, okay, up to, it's up to you. So Zul will show you the procedure for uh, storing it. Recording is very simple. Storing is where the lecturers have the problem. So I'll just follow. And whatever we have done today, right, whatever we are doing, we are recording it there. We are recording whatever I'm saying. So if you need it anytime, we can give, you can replay, <laughs> replay his, she's recording it on the video there. So we ca we'll give you the full transcript. Okay, now screen customatic will record your screen as such. So don't, uh, when you're having your screen open, please do not display any personal or like confidential information <laughs> like passwords and text or manuscript which you don't want people to see. It will record, of course you can edit it out, but you can miss. So usually we start off with a blank screen and we start off with a lecture. So you can pull up the lecture, any lecture note. You're not running screen customatic inside, inside screen customatic. Okay, okay, it's okay. Okay, just pull out any lecture, any lecture, oh yeah. Okay. Okay, so suppose this is your lecture note, okay? So how you do, you set up the screen, you click on Screencast-O-Matic, you need to log in and create an account. Okay, so they all have to log in as UMS, right? Uh, so okay, if, you all, if you all want to create, you can start off by creating, go to the Screencast-O-Matic site, and then you sign up. Sign up using your credentials, your normal credential. And when you want to go in for the one which Dr. Bakhtiar has, the password, we will give you the link to that. We can do that, right, sir? Later. So, just log in to that. So, you, you can log in with Google and you can create your account. Okay, so Zulfadli will log in as he is. So, Zulfadli is an administrator, so he has access to, okay? Okay, so Zulfadli is logged on, okay? So, the good thing about screen customatic, it runs out with, you can download and install it and you don't need internet to actually access. You download and install screen customatic. So it's downloading and installing here. And then you have your screen customatic recorder, okay? You already have one version, right? So it won't override, right? You already have one. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, 
just have. So you download and install it over here inside your system. So your screen automatic. Okay. Now suppose I'm a lecturer. I want to record my lecture. Okay. So what I do, I just go to this panel when I click and I click record. Okay. When I record, it will record anything which happens in this in this grid. So you can extend it, you can reduce it, increase up to you can pull it down. Now let me put let me record the lecture inside. So this is the lecture, and I want to record it. Now, in Screencast-O-Matic, right, you have many options. One of it is allowing you to show a full face, partial face, or no face. You can use only a voice. Now, depending on, because earlier there was no facial recognition and all that, we are afraid that, uh, if you are afraid that banking software or something will pick up your face, <laughs> use your <laughs> mobile phone, and it's, this is the danger, because earlier this was not there. Suddenly now the new technology is using facial recognition, you can capture people's face, right? So some people may be uh, uh, like uh, averse to using face, it's okay. Don't use your face, you can use other options. So Zul has, for so example, he uses uh, webcam, webcam, okay, that's him. The, you'll see a whole face, and then you have the both, in which case you'll see your picture somewhere, oh there he is, you can move it around and then you will have oh, nothing, oh nothing, only the screen. So the good practice is usually when we do, when you, if you see the practitioner of technology and learning from overseas, what they will do, they will always start with full face, then they will go, then they will zoom it back to the lecture, somewhere in the middle of the lecture they may <laughs> zoom out again to their face and then they keep on changing that uh, face, so it's to create engagement because uh, usually students want to see the face and the voice. So you can then usually you will start off with full face like that Zul's short, full camera Zul first and then you go into uh, partial when the lecture starts, okay? okay? So now your lecture is there, right? So now you, everything is done, you click, you, uh, Zul, you open it to the, you start the PowerPoint presentation, slideshow, just normal, okay? Okay? And where is the thing gone? The screencast, yeah, right? Okay. Ah, yeah, okay. Wait, wait, wait. So your, your lecture is on and then your screen, you have set everything up. Okay, now the lecture is set to go. Zul is showing his face. You show your face there in one corner. You show both. Okay, you have everything in place, right? So usually put your face where it's not going to disturb the overall layout of the picture. And then you just click record. record. Just you Okay, it will go to the queue. Three, two, one. Okay. Wait for a while, uh, you start, you record. Okay, then Zul will deliver his lecture. Just go through the lecture briefly. <coughs> you talk, talk, you stop, you start, you discuss, you can go on inside all this thing, okay? Just, just allow it to at least one minute, okay? Okay, 10 seconds, about 30 seconds, then you can stop, because we need some content at least. Okay. Wait for one minute. Okay, just stop, the, just stop it after some time. Okay, stop, stop. Okay, now you have, you have saved, uh, okay, you click done. And okay, now his lecture is done in the system, it's recorded in the system. Now you have many options given to you. One is to save it as a video file, one is to upload to Screencast-O-Matic and upload to YouTube. The first thing you need to do is try and save it in your computer as a video file for safekeeping. But what we have in UMS is the Screencast-O-Matic database. So you click here, and now because he has a license, it will upload it to the screen customatic database. So you'll, your account number will come here. You will add, add your account there. Okay. So this one, right, we, we, we have the, you have how many set with you? One? One, one only. Yeah. If you need more set, we can give, uh, even three, four also, you just take. Okay. As long as the lecturer is using, it should be okay. I will. We will give you the set. Dr. Bhaktiar will give the set. You can just use. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the set means the set is the, the camera, the headphone and microphone set in one. And you will have your the software. That's the most important part, the software. Okay. So you had the screen customatic. Okay. So this will actually go into an account. And Zul has the access. He has the database. He has a repository. So once you upload it to Screencast-O-Matic, it will be safe. And when we, if we have any problem with it, we are going to save it in JTMK server. 
So it will be our work. It will be there in the server. It's attributable to you. Okay, so this will be there. So the the screencast matic right? Once you have your uh, once you have the uh, it installed in your machine, you can basically edit it as well. The free version cannot be edited. The paid version, which we are having in UMS, can be edited. So you can crop your lecture into shorter versions, uh, what they call blocks. And then you have something known as CC, which is actually closed captioning. So because we are going in, the ministry wants us to uh, cater to the disabled or differently abled individuals. So you have closed captioning, which allows you to uh, put a text. So somebody who's uh, visually challenged, of course, they can hear a voice, but somebody who has a difficulty with the ears, deaf, they can actually see your text. So it allows you to do closed captioning as well. So that's what we do. So once it's saved, basically, it's ready to do. You can upload or you can save it. Okay. So now comes the point of how you use this video in your lecture. Okay. This is actually a content. So you have created a content once you create a lecture. Let's look at how you upload it. So now he's saving it. It will continue in the background. Okay, we go to the YouTube. So we'll just do a continue in the background. How many of you all have a YouTube channel? You all have a you all don't have Dr. Fifi. Last time you made a lot of video, right? I have seen. Yeah. But not in the YouTube yeah. channel. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it will be still be in the YouTube. If you can give your... <laughs> no, no, it, it will be there. Once you upload to YouTube, it will be there inside your YouTube forever. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Don't, don't. Okay, okay. But your lecture was very... I use you as the example to learn. I use you, your, your lecture and uh, Dr. Homer's lecture. I use as the chonto to learn myself. Because you are the, you are, you are the first people pioneer. Okay. It's not cartoon because you all are reading it because that time they told you all to read the script, right? Yeah, uh, I don't I know. But I use you all as the example, as a learning curve so to learn. It's so terrible looking back at that. <laughs> they took you all to the hotel and did it to the screen, right? Green yeah, screen, yeah. yeah. But I remember, yeah. But it's very good. But it's very good. I mean, but it was the quality is high quality. So you see on YouTube, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I will show you how it's done. Because actually, yesterday I clarify again with Prof Hong, UMS, uh, because I had some this, uh, how do you say, using YouTube, because YouTube is commercial channel, and then we are educational institution. But according to Prof Hong, and he clarify, I clarified yesterday, YouTube can be used for your uh, lectures as such. Okay, private universities, IPTS, they don't use YouTube. They have their own server-based system because they are commercial courses. But because we are public university, we can use YouTube. Okay. But, but, but if we were to upload our materials, mm. the YouTube account is registered under our UMS. Address. UMS, yeah, yeah. So that this is what you should, if you want to get recognition or for your YouTube, you basically have YouTube account, so you see there, okay. So you can, you all have a YouTube account which is linked to your UMS mail. The entire Google suite is linked to your account. Any of you all are using the YouTube account? No, right? So, so okay, with YouTube account, you, it's very simple. You just go, go into account. Zulfadli has his account, so you show you his. Okay, so you have your account. There. So it comes here. You can see the, dime, the, the pattern here, the columns, and then you go down. And then you have YouTube. Okay, YouTube is your official platform for broadcasting your lecture. So you have all these things over here, YouTube. Of course, you'll see all commercial and add. Now, when you want to add a YouTube video, all you need to do is click on that camera with the icon. Okay, there's YouTube Live, but don't go YouTube Live because of bandwidth. Okay, so you go YouTube. And then but we don't, it's like Facebook Live, so you have mess. You can use anyone, Zul, anyone, it's okay. Okay, I will show you how to do that because YouTube, we need to change some parameters. Okay, so when you click select file to upload, you can add the file. Okay, Jules, we just add one file, anyone, and make it private, unpublished. Uh, select the video file. So, for example, we have a file which Zul has made just now, the screen customatic. I will just edit. Okay, I just edit as an example. Okay, create, upload, uh, save, uh, save. Okay, it's published. He just just give us a few minutes because it will convert the file to YouTube format MP4. 
in the earlier days we have to do the PowerPoint and record voice on each and every slide, but now it is no more, it is direct record, no more recording, okay, okay. So now we upload, right? Well, all you need to do is copy and paste or upload the file directly from your browser. Demo? Okay. Hmm. Can? Okay. One drive BDB. Okay. Now, in YouTube, right, the, pe the reason why people use YouTube is to increase their publicity. <laughs> But it depends on you. Some people are uh, publicity averse. Some people want the publicity on YouTube. YouTube increases the traffic to your respective, uh, like to you. So if you are doing some research in something and they know you give lecture, they will automatically will get people to review, collaborate, will come through YouTube usually because they will see your signature when they search for you on YouTube. Now, what needs to be done when you do YouTube, when you do YouTubing is you need to set up the channel first. In your, in your respective account, you can set up different channels. For example, you can set up a research channel, you can set up an uh, academic channel, you can set up channels in your, in your system. And then a channel will get subscribers. Now, what YouTube will do is once you uh, get 1,000 subscribers and 100,000 views in one year, your channel gets monetized. So, in UMS, we don't monetize our channel because they are EDU. But if you are a private YouTuber, you will monetize your channel. So usually what students, even students are doing this, whenever a new car comes out or a new product comes out in the market, they will start YouTubing that account very fast. They will YouTube that product. So when the product is new, right, wherever they search for it, for example, last time Proton X70, somebody did YouTube, some of the student in the uh, IPTAs, and then they got immediately got like 179,000 hits in one night because they want to see the first preview of that car. So that's the way they improve the traffic. So people are using, the students have done it, they, uh, Proton had a project with the IPTA and IPTS and then they created YouTube for their product and then they generate traffic. So they develop subscribers, so once they, su they get subscribers, they monetize the channel. Monetize means for every YouTube uh, click, you will get a certain few cents of uh, revenue, okay? So that is what's being done. So we, uh, our lectures, right? We cannot monetize because we are under our university, but other things, even the noodle, you know that pedas noodle, that spicy noodle, curry noodle, they, when the curry noodle first came out, people keep on making YouTube video, <laughs> and then they monetize using this channel. So that's a strategy, but for us as educator, our main thing is to get coverage. So what we do, we have a lecture, so we have a description of the lecture, you have your lecture title, description, okay, this you fill in, but this is very important, which makes you discoverable this tag. So, for example, you write I, uh, UMS, usually the first tag we use is University Malaysia Sabah, we UMS, we give the full word, we write University Malaysia Sabah, we put in tags which are linking, there is no limit to the number of tags you can add, you can tag it to your UMS, you can tag it to your name, you can tag it to your institution or your discipline. So, you increase, you can put about 30 or 40, it does not have a limit on tags. Okay. So, these tags are recognized when somebody looks on Google, for example, somebody looks on Google and says Sabah. Uh, research in tropical biology. They say, oh, Sabat, they will automatically connect to you. Okay. So, UMS research in tropical. So, this is a very good platform to publicize yourself. Okay. Now comes the next part, which is the thumbnail. Thumbnail is basically the video picture which you add on the first page. Okay. So, you can add the picture of anything which you want. You can upload it as a, usually for a lecture, we add the first page of our lecture slide in the thumbnail. Okay. You have the thumbnail which is here. Okay, if you do not, you can click here, custom thumbnail and then you add your thumbnail image which can be your lecture, first slide. Okay, you save your, okay, you can save and upload here. Okay, the next one is the basic info. So, this is basic which is covered. Okay, now this one is very important if regarding you to protect yourself or you want to publish it. Okay, you can make your video under different category. Public will allow it to be searchable on all search engines. You can search on Google or uh, search engine, you will find the video. Unlisted, you cannot find it, okay? Unlisted, you can, means they can, it's difficult, all your meta name will disappear, anyone clicking will not find, they will key in, but nothing. You have private, which is only for you, that's all your personal video, okay? Which you, so, and then you have schedule. Schedule means, suppose I have 14 weeks of lecture, I can schedule it for release only on that week on that week of the lecture, week 1, week 2, week 3, week 4. So, it will schedule it based on release. So, usually what happens, those people, you see many of the movie, uh, the new movie premiere get hacked and then put on YouTube, they will schedule it, but someone hack and remove it out. So, that is how they, so that is what they hack, but uh, it is okay. So, but schedule is under one. Usually, uh, our lecture, usually I put as public, okay. If it is unlisted, you can share with your student, but public cannot see. 
you can share the link the student will see the lecture but the public will not be able to see that lecture if they look for it unless they do a what is known as a deep web search but we, no one does that in general no one can see okay so that's it done so okay so th that's okay so go Abdul to the top so this is the setting for the for premiere then you get the translation so you basically select the language which is you can use BM or English uh, based on what you want so you can use English or BM okay, set language and then you have the advanced setting this is the uh, setting which you have to be careful of Okay, now with YouTube video, one of the things is when you are doing recording in YouTube, if you are doing recording in the class or in a group, uh, you cannot display the face of other people uh, without their permission. So, for example, if I put the camera here in this room and I recorded it, all of you, you all can sue me if I am the one who recorded the video and uploaded it because I cannot display your face without your permission. So, in or if I need to display your face, I need to take a re written declaration from you before I do the shoot. I need to give you all the paper you sign. If you say no, I have to exclude you from the video. <laughs> that's the rule of, that's the uh, multimedia act, act of multimedia, we need to follow that. Okay, so be careful with student video in class or in a group. Don't post their face or their voice. Your lecture, okay, because you're the creator, you're, you, but if you put a third party inside, the third party should be as part of your, so, so I'll give you the example. Suppose your student created YouTube video on their own. They gave you as assignment and you upload it in your account. Then you are in breach of the multimedia act because you upload without their permission. Unless they give you written consent, they should write and sign. So if tomorrow the court, they go to court, you still have your paper, okay? Please protect yourself with YouTube because many people get sued. And the second one is background music. Don't use any background music or graphic which is not your own. So in the slide also, please don't use, because the Meta engine can find, the search engine can find uh, music. So we use some, uh, we go to, the, there was a video of, I think there was a case in UMS also, right? When the video was recorded in the, uh, in the convocation, and so there was a music playing background, so the creator of that music actually, actually it's inadvertent, it's recording going on in the background, but please don't make sure that, <laughs> that's the YouTube, and YouTube will flag it and remove it out, okay? So that's about the content. So comments are there. You can allow them comment, you can disable. Usually we allow all comment. So we want to know, sort by stop comment. Okay, this is the one which is the most critical one in YouTube is this license. Click here, so click on the license. Okay, YouTube allows you two kinds of license. One is the standard YouTube license. Standard YouTube license is like a copyright. No one can download your video. No one can reuse, remix without your permission. Oh, they have to pay you or up to your uh, arrangement between you and the end user. Okay, that's the standard YouTube license. So most of the commercial websites use standard YouTube license. The other one is Creative Commons Attribution. Usually for lecturers in public university, we use Creative Commons Attribution. Creative Commons Attribution means everyone can reuse, remix, uh, repurpose your video provided they cite you. So Creative Commons with attribution, when you, when you select that, YouTube uh, searches are very easy. So anyone searching on YouTube will find your creative form. If it's a standard YouTube, it's harder to locate on YouTube. That's the, that's the pro and con. So this decision is made based on your, your, your visibility, uh, your intention for visibility. Basically, do you want to be seen or do you want? So if you don't want to be seen and you just select the standard YouTube license. Okay. If you want to be seen, you just use uh, Creative Commons attribution. Okay. So all this thing is there. Closed captioning. This one is also there. Go down zoom. And this is another one which you want to click on, which is calling embedding. Do you know we embedded our video? We took a video from there. Some of the people don't want their video to be embedded in the third party website. Okay, so you'll go for the video and then you say embed code, but it says no embed code, right? Then they'll say this content does not want to be embedded. So these people don't want your video to be embedded in the third party website. Okay, so for example, if I am the private university and uh, Dr. Bhaktiar is the private university, I create my content and I don't want Bhaktiar to, <laughs> to repurpose it, then I put disable embed code. So this will basically remote <laughs> the embedding function, functionality. So embed will be removed, okay? So, so this one, you, the rest is all uh, visible. So you see all these things are there. So you have to select your field, education, you can select your language and so, so on and so forth. But this, the most important is that uh, creative common attribution okay when you do video once everything is done you publish make it private as well as, as it will become uh, make it make it uh, private okay then you publish 
Okay, so once you once you upload video on YouTube, you cannot remove it out. <laughs> YouTube doesn't allow you to disable the or delete the video. That's the even if it's a paid or a enterprise, you don't cannot delete. So it'll remain there forever. <laughs> okay, and be careful with the. Uh, video which can uh, you see what's happening that this these people end up in trouble you know they upload the video and uh, the lecture is over okay I'm finished but then I stop the lecture and then I'm talking impromptu okay and then the video keeps on recording and that's all confidential information or something which should not be said and then the video is uploaded onto YouTube okay so YouTube has a function where you can delete the audio track but hacker can actually open the audio track uh, so, so if I go and, and then I record, right? And I, oh, yeah, but oh, I don't think this is the right politician, blah, blah, blah. blah. And it all goes on. Then it goes into the YouTube. And then I go, oh, I made a mistake. Then I go and remove the audio and I replace. But the hacker can actually track the original audio. <laughs> they can track that. So don't put anything on YouTube which is like uh, implicating you in anything else. Okay. So with this multimedia, I have to be careful uh, as well. Okay. So now it's done. So you return to, then you go back and your video is actually on the link. So once you have your link ready, you can actually insert the video into, into your system and it will go on and on. Okay. Zul, you can show the channel which I create, the YouTube channel. You have, you can log in, right? My account is there, right? Open. Just show the link, the icon. So it will run into the system. You can see Zul and then you have your embed code. So Zul can, for example, Zul is having the lecture. He will just copy this embed code and put it in his lecture. You can show it Zul again, you embed, copy, and then we go to smart2, and we can go to smart2, uh, and then you embed. Uh, so you add an activity or resource, uh, you add a, you can add page or URL, yeah. Add, yeah, just, just add page. Again, embed, and just put uh, video, video, video test or test video, test video. Okay, embed, embed function, embed code, update, and below that you just have to add description. And then, okay. Now because it is private, it will come like this, just add description, just add something, text, just add text. Said any text, okay, appearance, okay. Save. Now, because it's a private video, it will come as a, it will like come like this. So only the student with the link can access that video. The other user cannot. So you need to share the link. Okay, now it will come. You can see the dot, dot, dot. Okay, so so this is the different kinds of uh, video you can make. Zul, you can just open my YouTube and I'll show you how the statistics actually work. The statistics work. Okay, so go to my and then go to the channel. Go to your channel, just go to your channel, uh, YouTube Studio Beta. Actually, YouTube Studio Beta is the one which carries everything inside the channel, okay? So this is the YouTube Studio Beta, okay? So this carries all the video which is created by any user. Now, the good thing about this is basically you can track the user and how they are watching your video. For example, see DNA extraction basic, okay? So examples here. So this video is actually showing the number of hits per day. For example, if I if, if my lecture was on September 11th and I told my student, watch the video which I upload today and then I saw Kasong, <laughs> means no one watched the video. <laughs> so you can actually track them using analytics. So you can see the video, you can see the video. So you can even track for the last few days. So you can track for, uh, for, for example, uh, since 2018, you check and then you can see. So you can see that at a certain time when it spikes, so that's a spike when you actually have lecture, it will spike. Oh, you ask them to watch the video. The spike is based on that. <laughs> so you can see the track, the video and find out. So this is a very good way to track all the videos in the system. And um, I made it CCBY. So if it's CCBY, it actually gets a lot of hits. Okay. So this CCBY, as well, you can see the full, the full tracking. So usually from uploaded lifetime. So this video will actually have about how many hits it has about 16.2 thousand so it got about 16,200 views so uh, it's based on the syndication so usually people once a video reaches certain critical mass right usually about 5 to 10,000 and suddenly the hits will increase because more and more people are sharing it and embedding it but if you disable the embed function you won't get this it will become flat it will basically get few hits mm -hmm. so but based on the, so this will actually improve the UMS webometric. So you're helping UMS to improve if you do this. If you embed it, uh, 
uh, if you disable the embedding, it won't help the webometric. So more and more people accessing UMS through this channel. Okay. So that's it. it tells you where the traffic. Basically, Google will tell you everything. It will tell you the traffic, where it's coming from. So th that means 60% found on search tube. 23% uh, found it from suggested video. Means somebody else has suggested your video. Then external is from people who are embedded into the other website. So this is where the video is being watched. That means somebody has embedded this video into their website. Go below those. It will show also show you the country and the origin detail of where it's coming from. Reach. Click on reach. So it will tell you which countries are watching and how they are watching and whether it's female, male, and what devices they are using. Everything, basically everything is. All the data is captured in analytics. Okay, so when you're doing teaching and learning, right, the blended learning practitioners, they always say, use the analytics to track the student engagement. Okay, so that's okay. So we can close. Okay, so that's about the video content creation. So hopefully, you all will all have your channel. Yeah. Um, so if we are making this screencast automatic, yeah. video mm -hmm. lecture, and we are using the video and we Mm. And when we start talking, mm. uh, do we have, uh, uh, like have a, a credit there? Yeah, okay. Okay, so we'll, to answer your question, I will open the slide share account. Slide share. Zul, you can open the slide share. Okay, slide share. Slide share. Actually, slide share. Earlier in the olden days, there was something called slide share, but now it's not used. It was it became defunct, and then it was taken over by LinkedIn. LinkedIn account. So slide share basically allows you allows you to download lectures. So in terms of the legality of using right, SlideShare is the only source of in, uh, lecture which is allowing you to do CC BY, which means that you can download the lecture from here and you can uh, attribute it to the author, the original content creator. Okay, so in SlideShare you will find uh, lectures. So this is the only one which you can actually le safely use. But if you are using content from other people, make sure that it is CC BY. Or else there'll be a legal repercussion for for us. I mean, when not for UMS, because when we are seeing the okay, there's an example of the video in which a person is standing in front of another video playing in the background and talking. He's not aware of that video playing in the background, but he just keeps on talking about his own stuff, but then gets sued <laughs> because that is actually a commercial running in the background. <laughs> so you can see many times on video on YouTube, right? They'll be wearing a T-shirt, and you'll see a blur on their t-shirt on their sleeve it is actually the logo of some company so like honda or toyota don't want their logo to be displayed as it become commercial uh, item so to be safe it's better to use your own content or to use uh, content like slideshare slideshare has a lot of content which you can repurpose slideshare slideshare got a nowadays not not very popular but it has uh, thousands and thousands of slides on different different see, on different things you can find even your UMS also many lecturers upload to SlideShare. Okay. But once it's on SlideShare, it's basically open to the world. You can everyone sees it. It's searchable on SlideShare. Okay, so that's about the content, the first content which is the YouTube account. Okay, all, you all need a break before we go into more content. So YouTube is clear about the screencasting. Tomorrow, if you all want to do actual practical screencasting, we will be here. We will help you to do the actual screencasting. Whenever you all are free, you can come and do the screencasting. So earlier, the, we are actually very happy because screencasting was earlier in uh, earlier days. We don't have screencast. We actually take PowerPoint and we record our voice on each and every slide. Insert, insert, insert. And with the problem, you have to record all over again. <laughs> and if you miss, <laughs> but with this one, no more. It's just directly. So it's directly playing. Actually, in the blended learning, right, there's a lot of other things like pedagogical, like there's a Gagne's rule of engagement, a lot of other things which we need to change in our lectures. Uh, it's not like normally we give the lecture, right? Norm our lecture style is we go to the lecture, we show the uh, introduction learning outcome, and then we show the objective, and then we start our lecture. We just talk. Paraphrase, talk. But in the online, when you do the blended learning, it's actually the lecture is very precise. It's, uh, so I'm, today I'm going to talk about it. We don't do much paraphrasing, maybe some analogy teaching, but not much paraphrasing and uh, impromptu conversation. So like, uh, we are not very sure on the licensing um, and copyright. Hmm. Um, the thing to look out for, the one that we can actually share, is the CCBY, CCBY license. CCBY license, yeah. And any other type of license? 
any other type. Okay, okay, like this. So, so there was a case of lecturer using. They they have published in Springer, uh, Springer, or, and they have the uh, graphs and the uh, tables, right? Okay, cannot use those graphs from Springer without the permission of the publisher because it's copyrighted. Even though I created the lecture, I I created so the manuscript is yeah, you transferred the copyright. Okay, that's with with P L O S Public Library of Science is different. Plus, you can readily reuse because plus is CCBY. Yeah. So all the uh, PLOS images from their lectures, uh, from their for the manuscript, download, reuse, put the attribution. But, but like if we are, um, uh, you know, like how we do citation, if uh, we just take that cannot, if, if it's copyright, cannot, 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 cannot That's why, that's why our content online, because yeah. we can't look out for like yeah. the smallest thing. Yeah. Yeah, because you know why you can just put your simple lecture. If you want images for a lecture, you can use your own images. I'll show you the later. I'll show you how to find the image using a CCBY search. 